Oh, today we are going to actually look at the SA1 AFI booklet B the, for the open-ended questions. Okay, so let's start. Now, whenever you are doing questions, regardless of whether is it your booklet A or booklet B, it is always very important to first try and identify the topic. Okay, and then the concept, which I've explained many times, but students don't seem to always take the effort to do it. By identifying the concept, right, you actually narrow down and focus yourself on the answers that you will be providing. Okay, so let's take a look at the first question. We even carry out an experiment using the setup shown below. She covered the test tube in setup B with some woolen cloth and added liquid H of the same temperature to both test tubes. Right, so this is the setup we're looking at. She then recorded the height of liquid H in the glass tube every 5 minutes for 15 minutes. The results are shown in the table below, right here. Okay. And so, the question asks, based on the information above, which setup contains liquid with a lower temperature after 15 minutes? Explain. So for this question, right, okay, now I'm going to run through something called annotations with you. Now, annotations in a question actually help you to understand the demands of the question. That's one. Two, it actually helps you read the question in a clearer fashion so you don't get confused. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Now, the first thing we should try and do is to see what are some of the keywords that we have here that might help us identify what could be a possible uh, topic or concept. So right off the top, I see words like temperature. I see words like woolen cloth. Okay? I see words like height of liquid H. So all these little keywords, right, actually tells me or hints to me that the concept or rather the topic that is being tested in this taste could be heat and temperature. That's the first thing off my mind, okay? Then the next thing I have to think about is under heat and temperature, there are many, many, many concepts. There, are, there is, uh, for example, transfer of heat from one region to another region. There is actually conductors of heat. There are also expansion and contraction. So what exactly is this question testing on? Which concept? Sometimes it may not be just one. It could be multiple concepts. So to help us with that, okay, we need to look at the question deeper. Now, before we go on, let's continue to annotate further. Now, in an exam, right, if you have different highlighters, you could help yourself by using different color highlighters, okay, to help you make sense or annotate. So you know that, okay, if it's highlighted in green, it's talking about setup B, all right? And then if you take another color, Okay, say red, okay, it's set up A. This will help you be able to differentiate your experimental setup easier. Why? This will help you later on when you craft your answers, you don't write the wrong setup. Okay, like straight away you know B is green color, right? So you would see that, ah, okay, so B is the one with the woolen cloth. Okay, and you are sure of what you want to write. And A is the one highlighted in red with no wooden cloth. Alright? And then also, you should highlight things like glass tubes. So, if you really want, you can even use a pencil, okay, to just circle away um, glass tube and then refer to it over here. Do an arrow. It may seem messy, but it actually helps your brain to make sense. Okay, so glass tube is talking about this particular glass tube here and not here not your test tube. So some of you could actually um, have mistaken your glass tube for your test tube. So it's very 
important to make sure that you're clear about the different components. All right? Okay, now that we're clear about different components, let's move on. So to the question proper, they say, based on the information above, which setup contains liquid with a lower temperature after 15 minutes? Okay. So looking at this table, you can actually see that as time increases, okay, so you can actually annotate, uh, okay, you can do a arrow downwards to say that time increase. This will help you make better sense. So as time increases, okay, set up A and set up B, the height of it both decrease. However, you will notice that set up A, the height decreased faster. So these are little annotations that you can do in exams to help you make a better sense of what exactly is happening. So then the question asks you, which setup contains liquid with a lower temperature after 15 minutes? So you need to ask yourself a few questions here. Okay, based on these results here, okay, they are showing me the height of a liquid in the glass tube, which is in this particular glass tube here, not the test tube. Ah. How is it possible that, okay, um, the liquid height could actually be decreasing? In fact, it's decreasing for both setup A and setup B. What is the key thing that causes the key phenomenon, the key event, the key scientific reasoning behind it decreasing? Now, if you recall, there was an experiment that was done very common for expansion and contraction. And usually it's the opposite, right? Instead of losing heat, you are gaining heat. And that's where okay, the liquid will increase in height because due to expansion, correct? But in this case, is it expansion or contraction? Because your liquid is dropping in height, right? So when you put all these factors together, you will realize that uh -huh, they are testing me on the concept of expansion and contraction. And in this case, all right, it is quite straightforward that it is contraction that they're looking at because the height of the glass tube, uh, the liquid in the glass tube actually fell. And the reason why it fell is because your liquid must have lost heat and when it loses heat, it will contract. So by being able to identify what is the key concept, you will then start to remember what are the key events, key concept associated with contraction. So straight off the bat, you know that in contraction, you need to lose heat. Alright? When you lose heat already, you will then contract. The word contract needs to be there, occupies less space, and therefore it drops down your liquid level. However, okay, because in this case, it is also asking you which set up. So you should use your CER to actually explain this whole question. So let's look at what your question, uh, how does your answer look like? So in the first part, you could have C. Remember C is your plane. So there's only two, either set up A or set up B. So the answer in this case will be set up A. Now, why is that so? So remember, right, um, in order for something to contract more, it must have a lower temperature. So that will be your E, your evidence in this case. Alright, and the evidence will be the height of liquid H in the glass tube 
of set up A either you can say is less or decreased Okay, so the height of the liquid H in the glass tube of setup A is less than setup B's. Okay, at 15 minutes. So this tells me that A must have contracted more. In order for it to be contracted more, it must have lost heat. Okay, so then the reasoning part, the R would be liquid H in setup A has lost more heat to the surrounding and will contract more okay so in this case be very careful to actually use superlative superlative words means comparison words in this case example would be like lost more heat okay because don't forget both are actually decreasing in temperature so how do you get a decrease in temperature? Loss of heat. Correct or not? So because you have a loss of heat in both, you have to tell me which one is losing more heat. And because both height is dropping, it also means that both are contracting. So you have to use the word contract more in this case also. Now, remember I told you um, for a question, it could test you on one or more concept, correct? So in this case, this question also requires you to tell me where heat is being lost, from where to where, okay? Liquid H lost to surrounding. Something that is very common, okay, in uh, heat questions. In fact, if you think about it, if I talk about um, poor conductors of um, or good conductors of heat, you also need to tell me lose heat quickly from where to where, gain heat quickly from where to where. Okay, even with just a normal heat transfer question, you must always tell me which region has a higher temperature, which region has a lower temperature, and hence, you know, heat always moves from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature okay so these are things that you really need to be very careful and very cognizant about okay so moving on to the next question okay now remember i always told you this okay um i want to stress again now Usually, the A and B question, they were supposed, they are supposed to complement each other and they are usually related. More often than not, the A question will give you a hint to what the B question uh, is supposed to be, as in for the answer. So you can make use of that. I'm, saying, not, I'm not saying that it's a definite all the time, but most of the time. Okay? So for the next question, now the picture below shows a flowering plant G found in an environment with very low temperatures. Okay, it is observed that all parts of the plant are covered with fine hairs. Based on the experiment above, explain how fine hair helps the plant to survive in the cold environment. So when you look at this question, right off the top, I see many keywords. What are some of the keywords? Very low temperatures. Okay, 
and then I see things like fine hairs. Okay, um, explain how fine help the plant survive in cold temperature, or uh, cold environment. So right off the top, I know that this question has got to do with something um, related to heat and temperature again, the same thing. And then I try to think about how is this related to the previous question. So in the previous question, right, you will realize that setup B, okay, has a woolen hair, sorry, woolen cloth with fine hair. So isn't this the word fine hair? Doesn't it ring a bell to you that this is rather similar to here? If you take a look at it, you realize that, hey, this is the commonality here. You know, there must be something that this question wants to hint me. And then I realized that, okay, for setup B, the rate of heat loss is actually lower. So, which means that the one with the woolen cloth actually acts like a poor conductor of heat. So, in this case, in contraction, don't forget, you are losing heat. So because if I zoom in, okay, due to this part of the woolen cloth with fine hair, my rate of heat lost from liquid H outwards, okay, is decreased. Due to the woolen cloth. However, when you talk about woolen cloth, okay, you should know by now that um, whenever you talk about woolen cloth, whenever you talk about layers of clothing, whenever you talk about feathers, it's not really about the woolen cloth, it's not really about the wool, it's not really about the, the layers of clothing, but more often than not, it is about the fact that this material is able to trap air. And air is a poor conductor of heat. This is something that we have learned about. Alright, so in the first question, the concept they're testing you on is contraction. On the second, sorry, in the second question, the concept that they're testing you on would be conductors of heat. So once you realize that, you must start to be able to relate. What are the key ideas related to conductors of heat? And the key idea for conductors of heat is always related to the fact to the rate of heat, okay, uh, passing through the material, okay. That is the main idea of conductors of heat. So what do I mean by rate? So for example, a good conductor of heat like metal will allow heat to pass through it very quickly. Don't use words like easily, please. Okay? Use words like uh, faster, slower, quickly. Okay? It's rate. You are talking about rate. Not easier or harder. Alright? So now that you have a good idea of what this is testing you about, okay, together with the hint, cold environment, and the question in the, uh, in the previous question, you more or less can deformulate your idea. I have fine hairs. The fine hairs trap air. Air is a poor conductor of heat. So it slows down or it reduces rate of heat loss from your flower to the surrounding. So remember, I always tell you this, when you talk about heat, it's always, you need to include a line telling me which direction is heat being lost or gained. That is extremely important. Okay? So how would the answer look like? It will look like this. Okay? So the fine hairs trap air which is 
a poor conductor of heat. Then the next part. So because it is a poor conductor of heat, right? What does it do? How does it help the plant? Okay. So this help reduce the rate of heat loss from the flower to the surrounding. So what are the key ideas? I'm going to highlight it for you. Okay, so you have trap air. So why must trap air? Because air is poor conductor of heat. So how does that help the plant reduce rate of heat loss from where to where? Okay. Yes. All right, this is the kind of demand, okay, um, that the question is asking from you. It shouldn't be surprising uh, that the uh, it needs to be this clear. All right, moving on in five, four, three. Two and one. Okay, question eleven. Okay, so very straightforward. Question eleven. So remember, right? Always talk about um, what is the concept. Okay, so straight off the top, I see the word lungs. I see air sac. Okay, I see blood vessels. I see gaseous exchange. So right off the top, already, it tells me that it is most probably a question on respiration, okay? Now, the diagram below shows lungs of the human and how gaseous exchange takes place in the air sac, okay? So, obviously, it has to be respiration or respiratory system. Now, gases P and Q are found in the blood at parts C and D of the blood vessels, okay? So, the amount of gases P and Q found in C and D is represented in the bar graph. Alright? Okay, identify P and Q. Alright? Now, let's take a look at this. Okay? So, first up. Okay, you need to understand where is D and where is C and where is everything? Okay, that is where your annotation comes in, especially when you have all this information being chunked together. It's going to be very difficult for you to make sense. So the only way you can do is you need to break the question down, read it carefully, and then annotate. A lot of you actually identified this wrongly because I don't see any annotations in your papers. All right. So I'm just going to go right, jump right into it to show you how, it, how is it done. So for example, they tell you that, okay, gases P and Q are found at parts C and D. Now in the first place, where is C and D? You need to be able to identify where is C and D. So we look at this picture here that shows us where C and D. So they tell you that the hint is C is going in and D is going away, correct? So this will be the lungs. How will I know that this is the part of the lungs? Because if you take a look, this is air sac and air sac is part of the lungs. Whereas this part over here, the blood is entering. So I would say that part C, okay, you can label it as um, blood from the Heart. And then over here, D, you can label it as blood going back to the heart. So then this makes it all so much clearer. And then the question is asking you, okay, guesses P and Q. 
right off the top, it shouldn't be surprising to you. There's only two guesses that is involved in gaseous exchange, correct? So because you know that there's only two gases, okay, it can only be carbon dioxide and oxygen. So one of it. So basically they're asking you, right? Okay, what is what percentages of uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen is being found in part C and D? So what you need to do is go back here to help you. Now you know that if this is blood from the heart, okay, it should be deoxygenated, meaning that it's low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide. That's why blood needs to enter in order for gaseous exchange to happen, whereby carbon dioxide is given out and oxygen is taken in. Then the blood that is flowing out now will be rich in oxygen and poor in carbon dioxide. So then after you figure that out, write it down. So rich in carbon uh, oxygen and poor in carbon dioxide. O2 stands for oxygen, CO2 stands for carbon dioxide, just in case you don't know. And please do not use short form or do not write a chemical equation, sorry, chemical formula in your exams. I'm using this to save space and save time. Now then on the other side, you need to justify to yourself. For part C, it should be low in oxygen, okay, and high in carbon dioxide. Okay, because it's blood that's coming from the heart. So it's blood that has... Um, already all the oxygen has been used up by other parts of the body for respiration and that's why it needs to come in here to remove the carbon dioxide and take in oxygen and then it comes out fully oxygenated and all the or most of the carbon dioxide will have been removed okay so with that in mind you have done your annotation it's very easy to to find out now so if you take a look at it p okay so what is P? So in this case, at C, level C, P is, okay, relatively lower. Okay, so what could this be? Okay, so P is actually your carbon dioxide. Correct? Your carbon dioxide. Okay. Give me a minute, ah, huh? let me just look at it again. Yes, correct. And Q has to be oxygen. Because if you take a look at it, at D, we have high amount of oxygen. Okay? So therefore, Q is oxygen. And low amount of carbon dioxide. Alright? Okay? So definitely, it has to be like this. Cannot be another way. Okay, moving on to next question. B, when exercising, breathing rate increases. Explain how two systems in the human body work together to ensure the circulation of gas Q during exercise. Now, once again, you need to do annotations for this to help you make better sense. Okay, so firstly, breathing rate increases. Two system circulation of gas Q. So let's break this down. So firstly, why do you want your breathing rate to increase when you exercise? So let's backtrack a bit. I always like to do backtracking when it comes to this kind of question. Now, in order to exercise more, you need more energy. In order to have more energy, you need to carry out more respiration. In order to carry out more respiration, 
you need to have more digested food and oxygen being transported to your muscle cells. In order to have more oxygen, you need to have an increased rate of breathing. So that answers my question already. Okay, so the primary idea of this is to obtain or take up more oxygen. Okay, so you see how reversing your ideas actually help you make sense of things. Then after that, they say two systems. Okay, so what are my two systems? Okay, so obviously I respiration. Now, how do I know it's respiratory, uh, respiratory system? Sorry, this should be respiratory, not respiration. Okay, my respiratory system, because you're talking about breathing faster, right? That's what the respiratory system does. Okay, and then after that, the second one would be your circulatory system. So where did I get this part from? Circulation, the keyword here. And then gas Q, we have identified as oxygen. Right? So when you put everything together, you will notice that, okay, your respiratory system comes in because you need to breathe faster in order to get more oxygen, okay, so that now your, rest, your heart, the heart part of your respiratory system, uh, your circulatory system can pump faster to transport more oxygen to your muscle cells for respiration to release more energy to support the energy demand needed for exercising. So a lot of you didn't write the word more or didn't write faster or you never write the word heart. You didn't talk about the function of the heart pumping blood faster. Okay, you just went, oh, circuit system um, uh, transports more oxygen. But where's what is the component of your circulatory system that actually allows that to happen and that is actually your heart so how would the answer look like okay so it would look some like something like this okay you would say that the respiratory system takes in more oxygen Okay, through increased rate of breathing. Right? And then we have we would have addressed the part on breathing faster. And then after that, you talk about the circulatory system. The heart in the circulatory system. Okay, would then or will pump blood faster to transport more oxygen and digested food. Remember, oxygen and digested food is always together to all parts of the body or I would say to muscle cells but you can say all parts of the body. Lah. For increased rate of respiration. You could choose to stop here or you can say to release more energy. to meet the demands sorry, or rather increased demands of exercising okay so what are some key concepts we need to take note of takes in more oxygen because your respiratory system is already taking in um, oxygen whether you are exercising or not even when you're resting so the word more needs to be there 
through increased rate of breathing, you need to relate back to the question so that um, the examiner can see that you're able to process that. Heart in the circulatory system pump faster because once again, whether you are running or you're not running, your heart is still pumping. So the word faster is important. Transport more oxygen and digested food. Once again, you, your heart, when it pumps blood, it will always transport oxygen and digested food. The key word here is more. Okay, to where? All parts of the body, increased rate of respiration to release more energy to meet the increased energy demands of exercising. Okay? So this is how you relate the two systems. Very important that you see the relation. Okay, so I really hope that you can see how annotation helps you craft your answer or at least understand the demands of the question what is required for you and your answer okay it has to address parts of the keywords all these are all keywords all these are like keywords increased breathing rate two system circulation gas queue so can you see they are all addressed in the answers all right moving on to the next question in five four Three, two, and one. Okay, next question. Lily went to Japan for a winter holiday with her family. She felt cold as she queued up to go up the bus. Fortunately, there was a heater installed in the bus. While she was traveling in the bus, she observed tiny water droplets forming on the inner surface of a bus window. Explain how tiny water droplets will form on the inner surface of a window. Japan. So right off the right off the back, okay. Straight away, when I see tiny water droplets, it hints me that hey, this could be a question on condensation or water cycle. Probably water cycle, the topic. Okay, but more specifically, because they're talking about formation of tiny water droplets, okay, from uh, the air, right? Okay, I would guess that the topic in this case would be, sorry, the concept in this case would be condensation instead of um, evaporation. Okay, so straight off the top, okay, when I think of condensation, I must always think of a few things. Ah, okay, I have water vapor in the air, touching cooler surface, losing heat to the cooler surface, and then condensing, right? So it's very, very straightforward. But what's more important that a lot of you make the mistake is you don't ever point out that the water vapor is warmer. So it's very important, especially when they told you there is a heater installed. So this would hint to you that in your answer, you have to tell me that the water vapor is a warmer one due to the fact that, okay, um, there is a heater to warm up the surrounding air. And part of what is in this surrounding air, remember air is made up of what? Nitrogen, carbon dioxide, oxygen, okay, your um, noble gases and finally your water vapor so your water vapor will also be warm so in your answer you have to address that it's absolutely necessary so you must say warmer water vapor in the surrounding air In the bus okay now this is important now uh. you have, you must tell me where the air is because it could be outside the bus so you must tell me it's in the bus okay touch the cooler surface of 
the inner window lost heat and condenses actually it should be lost heat to it the it refers to the cooler surface and condenses to form tiny water droplets okay so this is a very classic um, water cycle question on condensation I'm highlighting the important point warmer water vapor okay from where surrounding air in the bus cooler surface touch lost heat condense now take note ah, in this case okay uh, there is a heat source so you can say okay but in this case there is no evaporation so it's really up to you to say whether or not you want to say that oh um the water vapor in the air gain heat from the heater installed and became warmer that's fine or you can just straight away jump in and say warmer water vapor all right but the key idea is there must be a comparison between warmer and cooler now this is actually a similar thing about uh, uh, on this question whereby you, let's say you got a very hot steaming uh, bun you know your bun that, that the Chinese bun and then you put it into a box now there is nowhere that you can gain heat from because the bun is already in the box correct okay it's not like you're cooking the bun you already cook finish already so in this case you don't have to say things like oh um, you know uh, uh, water gain heat from somewhere because there's no heat source you can straight away say warm water vapor okay all right that's fine because in this case um it's really that or you could say something like water from the um hot bun evaporated all right it's understood but if there is a heat source then you need to talk about the heat source next Lily drew the following words I love snow on the wet window with an index finger and fell asleep okay after a while Lily realized that the words went missing although nobody wiped it away explain what happened now there's really two phenomena that happened in this case okay so what happens is that the first thing could be that all the water vapor that means the part that I'm coloring now in red actually evaporated because remember their water their water droplets right so they could have evaporated so when they evaporated it'll be the same as this part the i love snow part okay because the i know snow part is basically about her wiping away the water droplets so when the water droplets surrounding it evaporates you cannot see the words anymore it's the same thing okay but what's the key concept here you have to tell me that it gains heat from where when you talk about evaporation okay so the first answer would be okay the water droplets gain heat from the surrounding and evaporated Okay, so if you just tell me evaporated, not good enough. Because remember, I told you a heat question, you must always tell me the heat, okay, uh, is going from where to where. Now, the second option, all right, what could happen is that this part, the I love snow part, is there is no more water droplets, right? So what could happen is, instead of the tiny water droplets evaporating, more water vapor actually condensed on these areas okay that means after she wiped away the water droplets more of them uh, more water vapor condensed to form water droplets and cover back the message okay but the key idea here is the word more needs to be there a lot of you did not put that so more water vapor okay in the surrounding air
lost heat to the cooler inner surface of the windows and condenses and condense and condenses okay all right okay so question 13 so in this question right okay um it's a question that has got to do with application of knowledge so in the question it tells you that a koala bear has thick fur and thin fur on different parts of the body thick fur traps more air than thin fur temperature or trunk is lower than temperature of the surrounding air so these are actually things that you need to actually take note of and you need to annotate okay so some of the key things that we can see is first up they tell you that there are two types of fur thick and thin the second thing is that they tell you that the thick traps more air than thin and the last thing is the temperature of the tree trunk is lower than the temperature of the surrounding air so this gives you a rough hint about what the concept is talking about so the concept or rather the topic that you're being tested on is probably on heat and temperature okay and then based on the keywords that are given to you okay like air you can roughly guess that the concept they're going to probably test you on is on conductors of heat because air is a poor conductor of heat so you can actually annotate here right okay also we can annotate that the tree trunk over here has a lower temperature as compared to the temperature of the surrounding air so when you think about it in that sense right okay the koala bear right, who is in the middle here based on this if i'm going to zoom in will probably you probably want to lose heat all right you want to lose heat okay from the koala bear to your tree trunk which has a lower temperature at the same time you will want to prevent heat gain okay prevent heat gain by a koala bear from the surrounding because your surrounding has a higher temperature this is surrounding all right for the koala bear to keep cool so moving on to the question proper it states here explain how the difference in fur help the koala bear to keep cool on a hot day so these are some keywords that you need to address so firstly because they have the word difference here you need to compare and this is something that students often don't do okay or didn't know so because it's stated very clearly okay you have to compare okay and you want the polar bear to keep cool so to this answer this question right i already explained it earlier so to keep cool right the koala bear will want to basically lose heat very quickly to the tree trunk because when you compare the koala bear's body temperature to the tree trunk okay the koala bear actually has a higher temperature so you want to lose heat as for the surrounding air right you want to prevent heat from going into the koala bear okay and so you would probably need something of um, a poor conductor okay so just nice as they tell you that at the back so I'm, I'm going to color it in for you at the back of the koala bear is where the thick fur is right so your thick fur essentially traps more air okay so more air means it's a poorer conductor as compared to the front of the koala bear okay which basically is your thin fur and traps 
left at Sorry, give me a minute. Huh? Let me just do a bit of corrections here. Okay, so the part that it has less fur, it traps less air, means that it allows heat to be lost at a faster rate from the underside of the body to your tree trunk. Okay, and then the part that it has got thicker fur means it traps more air. So it's a poorer conductor. Heat, okay, rate of heat gain from the surrounding would be reduced. Alright, so how does the answer look like? So we are, if you're going to craft this, okay, and address what is needed in the question, we need to first say that, okay, the thick fur traps more air. So, it is a poorer conductor of heat. Okay, so we use the superlative here, poorer, because we want to show comparison. Alright? And then we explain. The thick fur reduces the rate of heat gain by the koala from the surroundings. Okay, then we have to go on to compare about the tin fur. So now we explain about the tin fur. So tin fur on the other hand, increases the rate of heat loss from the koala to the tree trunk. So a few things to note, if you take a look at it, firstly, you are comparing, talking about uh, it being a conductor, okay, because of the amount of air it traps. The next thing is, reduces the rate. So remember when you talk about uh, conductors, you're always talking about the rate of heat gain, heat, heat loss, or rate of heat passing through that material, okay? And then remember, is from where to where. So it's from the surrounding to other koala bear. Alright. Similarly, you see this part, the second part also talks about the rate of heat gain or heat loss from where to where. Okay, and this is very important, which I've stressed many times to students. Okay, but somehow uh, during the exam, students are careless, they don't write down these points. So make sure you make it a point to check your answers. So this is a commonly tested concept, a required demand of the question. However, students tend to leave it up once again, I stress, because they are careless. Right, so check your answers. Okay, moving on in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So the next question talks about how your koalas maintain a different posture on the tree depending on the temperature of the surrounding air to help it survive on a hot day. So tick in the box above to indicate how the koala would position itself on a very hot day. So remember this, on a very hot day, okay, you can annotate, okay, temperature is going to be very high. Right? So what happens is that between the tree and the surrounding, your tree will have a much lower temperature. Okay? So therefore, you think about it, your koala would try and spend as much okay, of its surface area 
sticking to and sur- uh, to the surface of a of a surrounding whereby it is of a lower temperature correct so between the surrounding and the cooler tree trunk you will want to have the most area of contact with something that is the cooler surface so in this case will be your tree trunk okay as opposed to this can you see over here you still have like those gaps in the air so because of that okay um, if you were to do this position assume this position you will actually be gaining quite a bit of heat instead okay because this part is the thin fur remember so if you're going to do that there is gap Okay, heat is going to be able to be uh, gained by your koala from the surrounding very quickly. Okay, so therefore the answer is actually this one. Okay, so what kind of answer are we looking at? So, once again, the key idea is to have a larger surface area in contact. So, students are very careless. They say expose surface area to the tree that's not correct okay because the koala's underside is not exposed it is in nowhere exposed it is in contact so how you phrase your answers is extremely important because it could mean a whole different thing because to say exposed this is how it looks like when it's exposed okay so you need to be careful so i'm going to pan down how the answer should look like all right so we are looking for an answer that looks like this so more of the koala's body with the thin fur is in contact with the tree so it can lose body heat faster to the tree. Okay, so once again, a few common things. Okay, you have to be clear about okay which side, which kind of fur are you talking about. So obviously, you're talking about the thin fur. Okay, and that's why the annotation at the start is important over here. You you actually show that. The underside is the thin fur. So this will help you craft your answer. The second thing would be that um, talking about the in contact with what? Okay, with the lower temperature area, which is the tree. And last but not least, lose heat from where to where. Okay? So because body heat it really indicate is from the koala. Alright? Alright, moving on in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, question 14. Okay. Now, question 14 talks about a block being placed on a wooden table as shown in the diagram. A rubber band is stretched when a block is pulled against the rubber band. Name two forces acting on the block when the block is released so based on this i didn't know this topic is on forces okay on forces so it really straight away comes to me i, I comes to me on concepts about forces what should i talk about okay so forces will be things like okay what are the types of forces is it a contact type of force or is it a non-contact force so all these concepts should come right to my brains okay straight away Things like friction, okay, you know, friction needs talk is a contact force is between two surface areas. So if I'm going to write about friction, I need to actually, uh, sorry, friction. I I need uh friction. I need to actually remember to talk about the two surfaces. Okay, so things like this should come to your mind very quickly already. Okay, once you identify which topic is it on. So the two forces acting on the block when when the block is released are mainly two. Now the first thing, you have this rubber band that is stretching over here. So this tells you that there is actually what? Elastic potential force. Okay. 
Oh, sorry. Elastic spring force. Okay. Okay. Elastic potential force also can. All right. No worries. Both is okay. Elastic spring force, elastic potential force is fine. Okay. Then after that, okay, you have frictional force. And then after that, if another one that you would have is actually gravity. Okay, so basically you can actually have either any two of this. I'm just listing down gravity as one of the additional ones. Okay, so basically the gravity, right, allows you to, um, in fact, gravity acts on everything on Earth. So as long as you are on Earth, okay, the force of gravity is definitely acting on your object. So you can choose to write gravity, okay, um, frictional force or elastic spring force. Now the common mistakes that most students have with this question is that, okay, they mistakenly misread the question as energy. Okay, so you have, um, instead of uh, elastic spring force, you have people writing elastic um, spring uh, energy or elastic potential energy. Okay? Alright? Oh yes, sorry. Just to stress again, it's elastic spring force. Okay, my apologies. Elastic spring force. Okay, moving on. B. The wooden table is replaced by marble table while all the other variables are kept the same. Will the block travel over a longer distance? Explain your answer. So for this question, right, okay, a few things you need to know. So while they do not show you that um, a marble is typically smoother, okay, but you need to give a reason. So most students actually didn't get this mark okay was because they just went yes to stop and then they go on to say that oh this is because the marble um will reduce friction between okay the surface of the the um the between the surface as or uh, the surface and the object okay so this is your surface and this is your object but you fail to tell me that it's because the marble is smoother than wood okay because the comparison here that we have is a wooden table versus a marble table so you have to basically compare the two so you basically need to compare the two okay when you talk about it and then because of the comparison you're able to say that it resulted in a reduce in friction between the two surfaces and this was another very common mistake. Students tend to forget that friction is a contact force. There must be two points of contact. Okay, so some students will say things like, "Oh, frictional force is reduced. Act, uh, frictional force acting on the block is reduced." That is not actually correct because it's a contact force. It cannot just be the object alone. Okay. So if we're going to write this down, how does the answer look like? So first tell me yes, alright, and then explain. The marble table is smoother. So this is the comparison part that I'm talking about. Alright, and then you go on to explain. So there is a reduction or there is less friction between the marble table and the block. Okay, and hence the, uh, the object will travel further. All right, then the next question brings us to this 
experiment whereby it tells you that Bala is going to repeat the experiment. However, the blocks are of the same mass and material but different area of contact with the wooden table. So they, got, they asked you, based on Bala results, did the area of contact with the table affect the friction on the block? Okay, explain how you came to your conclusion. Now, obviously, when you look at this, straight off the back, you realize that the distance move, okay, do your annotations, is the same. Okay, but the area of contact here is different. So, by annotating this way, straight away, you know already, okay? Though the area is different, okay, the distance move is the same, okay? Now, most of you were able to talk about this, okay? However, you need to point out explicitly that even though the area in contact of the table is different, okay, the distance move is the same. This is okay. The part that a lot of you missed out is uh, talking about the same mass. Now, why do we have to talk about mass in this case? Now, we have to talk about mass in this case because we know that mass basically affects gravity. Okay, the amount of um, gravitational force that you exert on an object, okay, will depend on its mass. So, for example, okay, someone who has a heavier mass will experience more gravitational force than someone with a lighter mass. Okay, and that actually affects the distance that is going to travel because obviously something with a heavier mass will experience more gravity okay pulling it downwards so you think about it in that sense then the distance move will also be affected correct so take okay another simple analogy imagine you use two equal force to push two toy truck okay now one toy truck is not carrying anything the other toy truck carries okay 5 kg of items with the same force that you push which toy truck will travel further definitely will be the toy truck that is empty correct and the only change you realize that is it's got to do with the mass okay heavier mass actually affects the distance travel so because of that you have to mention that they are the same mass so how would the answer look like so no Although blocks G and H have the same mass but different contact areas, they both move the same distance. Alright, so two points to note. One is different contact areas. Okay. The next thing is same mass. Because mass affects distance move due to the amount of gravitational force that may act on it due to the difference in mass. Okay. So if you forget it, uh at this point, think about the analogy I gave you. The two trucks, two toy truck that, that I told you about. One is empty, another one is carrying a, a load of heavy mass. Okay, push it with equal force. Which one will go further? Okay. All right, moving on in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so this is a continuation of the previous question so then Bala wanted to find out how the distance from the block okay there's a spelling error at the end of the wooden table M will affect the distance traveled by the block so obviously this is very straightforward the shorter it is okay the further it will travel why because the shorter M is the more your rubber band will be stretched 
and therefore your elastic spring force will be greater. Okay? So relationship between distance m and distance traveled by the block. Okay? Once again, okay, I would always say annotate so it's easier. So as this decreases, Okay, this increases. So straight away by annotating like this, I know that they are opposite relationship. Okay, and be very careful. Some of you would actually write the relationship as this way. When the distance traveled by the block increases, distance m decreases. That is wrong. Because it's not a cause and effect. You have done you have done it the other way around. Effect and cause. No is because of the change in distance m that affects the distance traveled. So be very cognizant about this point. Okay? Common mistake. So as distance m decreases, the distance traveled by the block before it comes to a stop increases okay so this follows a very nice uh, uh, there is a framework as something something increases or decreases something 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 increases or decreases okay so this is a very nice um, framework that we always talk about Next, explain in terms of energy conversion your answer in D, alright? So, the best way to do this is to really annotate and talk about it. So, they're talking about relationship in M, right? So, you know M affects this part, which is actually your elastic potential force. Sorry, your elastic spring... Um, Elastic spring, sorry. As you stretch more, okay, once at a time, ah, you get more elastic potential energy, okay. Over here, so we're talking about energy. We're not talking about force, just to be clear, because they ask for energy conversion. So the more you stretch, okay, the greater would be your elastic potential. energy okay you get more of this because your your uh, rubber band is being stretched more so when you release it what will happen is because you have more elastic potential energy you also get more what kinetic energy okay so you have to show that conversion in your answer so therefore the answer will be more elastic potential energy is converted okay, of the rubber band, sorry, of the rubber band is converted. Make sure you have this keyword converted to what? More kinetic energy. of the block and that results in it traveling further so what are some of the keywords here elastic potential energy converted okay kinetic energy and very importantly please use the word more okay because that shows the distance Okay, 
Yeah, so if y'all want, y'all can add in the word stretched over here, okay? Now, moving on, three, two, one. Okay, this question here. Okay. The diagram below shows a simple water mill. Okay. Now, the water mill will rotate as water drops onto the blade of the mill. Okay. The position of the tap is adjustable such that it can move upwards or downwards. What form of energy? So keywords here would be energy. Does the water droplet at point X possess? So the first thing you realize is that I tell you everything okay, has gravitational potential energy okay, when it's at a height. Correct? Okay, that's one thing. The second thing is that um, it will also be dripping down. So it's actually moving from this point to this point. So as it's moving, you will know it's kinetic energy. So very straightforward. The two forms will be GPE, gravitational, potential energy, and kinetic energy. Okay, now the next question, this is the one that I want to talk a little bit about it uh, a little bit more. Now, suggest two changes to the setup such as the water mill will spin faster. Now, there could be more than these two answers. However, the rest of the answers, okay, are not really 100% certain. Why? Because there are a lot of uncertainties. For example, some of you may say, add more number of blades to the, to the mill. It sounds plausible, but it's not the best answer because there are many factors. Then some of you may say things like, oh, make the blade bigger, make the wheel lighter. Yes, okay. However, it may not always be true. It depends on a lot of circumstances. Okay, because let's just say you make the blade bigger, there could be more wind resistance, which may slow it down. You, you know what I mean? So when you answer this kind of question, work with what you're given. So the first thing that I noticed straight away is that the height is adjustable. So I want to make sure that I should adjust this tap to the highest point so that, okay, the water drops that goes down has the highest amount of gravitational potential energy. So when there is more gravitational potential energy, okay, uh, at here, there is more Ke uh, over here because more GPE can then be converted to more Ke. Make sense? All right. Then the next thing that I want to talk about is, okay, I can also turn on the tap. Okay, turn the tap on um, at larger to increase the water flow rate. Correct. So when more water gush down, all right, it will also spin my windmill faster. So these are, are the two adjustments that are already given in the question paper that you can talk about and not have to invent something that is plausible but not certain okay so make use of what you're given in the question booklet all right so you could move the position of the tap upwards that's one the second one would be to increase the flow of the water all right and that's how these two question can be um, completed okay so for this question is a very common question all right that is on conversion of energy all right so when you look at this kind of question you need to understand the key concept that you're being tested on so this may be a common question all right, whereby the common concepts are tested in different scenarios. So it may not be, okay, talking about your water, turbine, and electrical energy. It can be a question on springboard. When someone jumps on a springboard and then goes up in the air. So it's still talking about energy conversion. So you need to always talk about what energy converts to what energy. Okay, because the first rule is always 
energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be um, converted from one form to another. All right. So let's take a look at some of the keywords here. The question asks, how will building the dam at a position much higher than the position of the turbine help to produce most amount of electricity? So the first few words that I will be highlighting is position much higher. So you take a look at it, straight off the top, you note that there is a superlative word here, higher. So that means in your answer key, okay, you should also in somewhere in your answer have a superlative term, okay, that states that there is more of something, right? Or less of something, depending on your answer. Okay, so in this case, you also know that when you look at this diagram, a higher position of the dam will result in what type of energy that has more, which is actually your GPE. So an increase in the level over here will also increase in your GPE. For those who don't know, GPE is short form for gravitational potential energy now I want to stress that this is not to be confused with gravity gravity is a force GPE is an, a form of energy okay now it's a potential energy because it is energy that so-called has not been spent it is stopped up so in this case when the water is flowing down there is a conversion over here. Now this GPE would then be converted into kinetic energy. Okay, why? Because, KE stands for kinetic energy. Eh? Because your energy is flowing, right? It is moving. Anything that's got to do with uh, moving, got to do with movement, all right, has kinetic energy. And that's something that we all know. So a moving car has kinetic energy. The fan that is the ceiling fan that is spinning above your head has kinetic energy. All right. Now this kinetic energy, okay, when it flows downwards, okay, and it runs through the turbine in this case, would then be converted to the kinetic energy of your turbine, of your spinning turbine. Okay, and in turn, when your turbine spins, it will then cause your generator to generate electricity. Okay, so then this Ke would then be converted to electrical energy. So when you actually use an arrow to show the conversion, Okay, it is from GPE to KE of water flowing to KE of your turbine spinning and then from KE to electrical energy. This is the conversion from one form of energy to another form of energy. So if I were to write this, okay, how would the answer look like? Alright, so the answer will look something like this, okay? So first thing, remember I, I talked about a superlative, right? So, sorry, just let me change the thickness of the pen. Okay, so the water will possess or will have more. GPE. Please do not write GPE, spell out the whole full thing. Okay, because I want to save time when placed higher more GPE of the water will be converted use this word converted to more kinetic energy KE of the water
which is then converted to more Ke of the turbine and finally to more electrical energy. of the generator so can you see I'm gonna highlight all the superlative here okay can you see how important the superlative is and you have to repeat this you cannot just one time say more and then after that, the behind one, all the energy don't, don't tell me. And you also need to talk about the type of energy. So I'm going to highlight the type of energy. So from GPE, okay, converted to KE, converted to KE of turbine and electrical energy. So there are two types of kinetic energy over here. So most students will miss out on the kinetic energy of the turbine. They will just say, oh, um, GPE of water converts to Ke of flowing water which will then cause the turbine to spin faster and produce more energy okay Right, so this is something that um, is very key. So if you're not too sure, I suggest you memorize this answer so that if a similar scenario or similar questions gets presented to you, you can use a similar format, which is that you have to talk about, okay? So did the initial amount of um, energy increase? Okay, if yes, then the energy, what does, how does it get converted from one form to the other form? Okay, so you can just replace the type of energy that is being converted from one form to another form. Alright, and that is how being familiarized with a type of question will help you answer new questions or new type of questions. Okay, moving on in 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Question number 16. Now once again, I would like to stress that you need to be very careful. Are you, are you, is this a false question or is this an energy question they're asking? That's the first thing. Second thing is read the question very carefully by annotating the question. A lot of you lost marks on this question because you did not annotate, you did not take note. Okay? Now let's go through the question quickly. Jack push an object over the same type of surface from, from point A to C, sorry, A to C as shown in the diagram below, okay? On the diagram above, okay, highlight this is a keyword, draw and label any two forces that were acting on the object at A as Jack was pushing it, okay? Now, because the keyword here is acting on the object, you cannot draw it anywhere else. 
Okay, so obviously, how do you represent forces? You represent forces by using arrow to show the direction of the force. So the first thing you need to do is to identify what are the two forces that are acting on the object when you push, correct? So he's going in this direction. So since he's going in this direction, all right, you know that there is an opposing force motion over here and that will be your friction. And the second one, which I've told you many times, as long as you are on Earth, unless it's a special chamber that negates gravity, every item on Earth is subjected to the same, okay, gravity. So gravity is a force, but gravitational potential energy is an energy. Be very clear about it. Okay, so in this case, Okay, you need to draw the arrow this way. Okay, and then label this as your friction. Now the arrow cannot be here. It cannot be here. It cannot be here. It cannot be anywhere else. Because remember this, friction is a contact force. It needs two surfaces, so it has to be the surface of your object and your floor or your slope in this case or your ground. So if you were to draw your arrow here, here or here, you realize that there is no opposing, right? There's no second contact. So it's technically it is wrong, so cannot. Anyway, the question already told you to draw it on the object. So the next one will actually you have to draw another arrow, okay? So you can draw it here, this way, okay? And label this as gravity. I will also accept if let's just say you draw it somewhere here like this. That's fine, okay? Understandable. But it has to be on the object. Now, next up, uh, question B. This question, all right, a lot of students have this misconception and have answered this question wrongly because of a very serious misconception. This, I'm going to clarify one last time. Now, we need to first understand that gravity is affected by mass and only mass okay so what does this mean so for example okay when you have so what is mass mass is basically the amount of substance that makes up oh sorry the amount of matter that makes up a substance right so basically, you only experience a greater amount of gravity when you have more mass. So for example, if you have someone who is 80 kg and someone who is 100 kg, the 100 kg guy will experience more gravity than the 80 kg simply because of mass versus your gravitational potential energy which is affected by both mass and height of object when i thought about height i meant location uh, in this case So in this case, an example would be that, okay, if let's just say you have two balls, one is actually 10 gram, another is 100 gram, A and B. If you were to drop A and B, okay, given that they are the exact, you drop from the same height, you will notice that when it hits the sand, say this is the sand, 
okay a actually causes a greater depression as compared to b now the reason is because the mass of a is greater remember gp is affected by mass so because of that it has a higher gpe compared to b okay which is converted to greater ke as it falls causing a greater depression in the sand at the same time your a okay if i were to change this a into 10 gram but in this case i increase the height of a so let's just say now i put b at a lower ground b starts from here 10 gram or so you will also notice that a will still have a greater depression than b because of height so because of that we know that gpe is affected by two items okay which is mass and height gravity on the other hand is constant on earth the only thing that will change it is actually the mass so why am I taking the time to explain this? Because some students have this misconception that because the object when getting pushed from B to C okay, has a experiences greater gravity. So because it experiences greater gravity from B to C due to the increase in height Therefore, he will need more force to push the object from B to C because the object has increased in height in terms of location. The amount of gravity acting on it will also increase. This is not correct. This is a very serious misconception because the object did not change. Right? So the object has the same mass. So because it is the same mass, the, um, uh, the amount of gravity that is acting on it would also be the same. Right? As what I told you earlier, gravity is affected by mass. Right? So another way to think about it, you know, they always say, oh, how much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? So if I put you on the ground and I weigh you, Let's just say you on the floor, you weigh um, 60 kg. If I put you, okay, that is level one. Let's say that I put you at level one of a building, of a hospital. And then I ask you to take the lift from level one to level five. And I ask you to step on the same weighing scale. You will still weigh 60 kg, what? right? Correct? Did your height increase in terms of your location? Yes. You went from level 1 to level 5. But did your weight increase? No, you still weigh 60 because your amount of gravity that you experience is the same. Right? That's a very simple analogy that I can think of. So please be very cognizant and be very careful of this very serious pitfall. Okay? Because many students have written that down. Now, the real reason is because when you are going in this direction, you are going against gravity because gravity is going in this direction. So because you are going against gravity, you need more force to oppose it, to go against it. Now, be very careful. You cannot say overcome gravity. It is not correct. To overcome gravity, okay, it means that your object must be floating already. Because if it has a force that is greater than gravity, then instead of being on the slope and being pushed upwards, okay, it should be floating in the air. That is what it means to overcome gravity. In fact, it should continue to just float up in the air. Okay? So how would the answer look like? So you can say that, Jack,
is pushing the object up the slope from B to C. Now, be very careful. Uh, a lot of you didn't label, don't know from where to where. You just tell me pushing the object. Okay, be very clear about where, what, where, which reference point are you talking about? Okay, this is common for all questions. Okay, compared to ground level from A to B. So there is a need to compare. You need to tell the examiner what is the difference from A to B and B to C. And then you can tell them. So because it's a slope, right? So from B to C, he needed to push harder or push with more force as he is going against gravity. Okay, this is something I want you all to be very clear about. Against gravity, not overcome gravity. I stress again. Okay, moving on. Suggest one method to allow Jack to reduce the amount of force needed to push the object from A to B. Now, for this question, most students got understood the question, but they didn't phrase the answer correctly. Some students actually say, use a lubricant or use oil. My question as an examiner would be, use oil for what? Do I drink the oil? What do I do with the oil? Do I just put the bottle of oil there? You need to be specific. You need to tell me. Apply the oil where? So you have to tell me something like apply the oil on the surface of the ground or apply the, the oil on the uh, surface of the object. And please, if I were you, I will put there, use, okay, apply a lubricant bracket oil. Okay, to tell the examiner, an example will be that, okay, on the surface of the object. Okay, I mean, it's just common sense, right? When you think about it, use, use oil, use a lubricant, but you never tell me how to use it. So, in, when you answer questions, leave no room for ambiguity. Be very clear and concise. How do you use the lubricant? Apply on which surface? Lastly, explain in terms of forces how your method stated in C will reduce the amount of force. So once again, you need to identify what is this force. And of course, this force will be your friction. So whenever you talk about friction, you have to mention that it is happening between two surfaces because it is a contact force okay so the answer will look like okay the lubricant reduces the amount of frictional force between the object and the surface of the floor. Okay, so this is imperative. So these are concepts or demands of question which has been repeatedly stressed to students many times. So make sure that you re remember these concepts. So we've come to booklet Sorry, we've come to the end of booklet B for your AFI paper. Take the time to really take note of the highlighted points in this okay, tutorial. Alright, 